Obviously, um, this weekend's been dominated mostly because of the Drake album, right? And the reaction around it. And I've seen a lot of people online basically trashing the album, saying how crap it is. And it feels like to me going above and beyond to have the most hottest and controversial take regarding the album itself. But for the most part, from what I can gather online, most people don't really like it. They think it's boring. They think it's uninspired. They wanted Drake to rap and they just think it fell flat and some people are basically labeling it as H&M music, right? Which is uh, this new kind of insult that people have basically been um, regurgitating for the entirety of the weekend, which is fine. No problem with that whatsoever. Like I said previously, I don't ever, if ever, maybe rarely, I can't remember the last time actually, where I listen to music off the basis of what other people say. Um, I check stuff out all the time myself every week because, you know, being a DJ and being somebody who's kind of obsessed with music, I'm always checking out new albums anyway. So I listen to everything and give everything a go from Taylor Swift to BTS to Falls to flipping Drake to whatever. I'll listen to anything and if it kind of ticks or tickles my fancy, and then I'll of course add it to my um, listing repertoire for the week, especially when I'm running or going to the gym and stuff. So it's not that big of a deal. But I know with some people, if you're a fan of someone's work and you're a fan of what they've done previously, I think most fans nowadays, they don't really know what they want, but I would imagine if you do know what you want, you kind of just want the same, the more of the same. So if you jumped on board on the Drake kind of hype train on views, you want more of that. If you jumped during more life, you want more of that. If you jumped on during Scorpion, you want more of that. Nothing was the same, you want more of that. Whatever, it, whatever album you jumped on board, you'd probably want more of that. But as an artist, you can't, it's, do that really you can't you you can't really be in it for fan service you can't just be making stuff um specifically to what your fans want you can't cater all your artistic output to what your fans want basically there has to be some level of input and understanding what they kind of are into but you kind of have to present i feel like new ideas new sounds um set new moods set new vibes in order to keep challenging yourself to make interesting work and obviously to evolve as an artist overall i think personally for me and from the artists i kind of grew up loving and kind of idolizing and i think another good one who i kind of went back into the archive and started to re-listen to some of his albums was David Bowie is another good example somebody who consistently um reinvented himself throughout the years you know to not you know it wasn't all fanfare a lot of fans would kind of be bemoan his um descent into disco and all that kind of stuff but for the most part he did a really good job in terms of consistently reinventing himself but reinventing himself within within i won't say parameters but it felt like it made sense especially when you look back at it it makes sense but maybe at the time it didn't at the time but a modern day version of it would be kanye west in it right who kind of consistently throws curveballs at himself right or consistently kind of ties one arm behind his back to make it harder whether it's gospel whether it's not no, no profanity um whether it's kind of pursuing a particular sound or trying to get a particular vibe going whatever it may be and for the most part i think if you're a fan of his work you are much better for it because he consistently keeps giving you fresh and new stuff to listen to. So I love that. All good. I think the problem Drake has at the moment, it feels like, is because he still hasn't have got that classic album, like I've always said, I sort of think he has that solid body of work that I think represents who he is as an artist in terms of giving you a bit of the rapping, giving you a bit of the R&B, maybe giving you a bit of the pop stuff, maybe giving you a bit of the Caribbean stuff. Do you know what I mean, he doesn't have a solid thing that could really, okay, here's a good album that kind of personifies what I'm about. I think you could take several tracks from different albums and put them together and make a compilation that would represent Drake properly and probably be a classic, but in terms of a full body cat, he doesn't have it at the moment. So because of that, his fans mostly want him to do what they think he does best which is rapping and r&b and then when he comes out with the house album i can understand why they get pissed off but the other side of me also thinks if you're a fan of drake and you generally don't like it you should just say you don't like it this whole like bending over backwards to try to convince yourself that it's actually good if you don't like it, because especially again, I, I put my flag in the ground. I said I do like the album, but again, I'm quite biased and my taste level is maybe a little bit skewed to liking it because I'm already into house music anyway. I go out a bunch, I go to these clubs, I hear this type of music played in places. I'm going to a really big party, hopefully. No, so festival, sorry, one day festival next weekend, or no, in a few weeks, sorry. Um, that's going to be catered specifically to this type of music. So I'm the target demographic for it. So my review is a little bit skewed in that way but i think if you're an absolute cardinal drake fan right um from nothing was the same type person um to comeback season that type of drake fan 
you shouldn't like this because it sounds nothing like the Drake that you fell in love with. But you also shouldn't make excuses similar to what DJ Academics is making on his profile because, again, he's like the number one Drake fanboy. And I think this type of fanboyism is something that I've never been a fan of. As much as I love and sort of like worship people like Pharrell and Kanye and, you know, what they've been able to do with music over the years, I also haven't, it also hasn't blinkered me or blinded me to sometimes them making crappy stuff. And I can call it out because I like music. It's not like I'm in love with them first as people. I'm in love with the music they produce and then obviously them as people later. But I think when you're a over, over fanboy, you end up doing stuff like this. And this is a tweet taken from Academics' Instagram account. This is as follows. Of course, he's one of those people that does that thing where he, you know, takes a screenshot of his tweet and uploads it onto Instagram, which I absolutely hate. But anyway, we continue. And this is a tweet. By the way, let's be real. Honestly, never mind, it's a Drake mixtape. He's only calling it an album because of the new deal he got where it counts as one. It's in the realm of Dark Lane demos. Um, if you're reading this, it's too late. More life, etc. Experimental and literally no rollout. Album's still fire, though. So you're making up all these excuses to justify why you think the album is fire or to give credence or reason as to why the album came out the way it came out, which is a nonsense. Drake specifically said in his caption when it was coming out that it was his seventh studio album. It was meant to be the big release after he got off his last deal, which he spoke about cryptically in a few raps prior to that. Um, there was a big you know, rumor mill going on. Will he stay independent? Will he sign this crazy bag deal with Apple, blah, 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 blah. Then you end up re-upping with whatever he was with before with some you know i'm sure it's an exclusive crazy money deal which we won't really be privy to but this was meant to be one of the big releases that was going to come out post you know surf i love boy especially considering how lukewarm the reception to surf i love a boy was this was meant to be the big one okay cool let me redeem myself so the fact that hip-hop fans don't like this is a big deal but if you're again if you're drake nut hugger you're gonna make all these backwards flipping thing you know things to make to justify why maybe the album is not as good as maybe you'd hoped it to be then his other tweet as well as equal is disgusting it says as follows i ain't gonna lie drake album is definitely jersey club inspired i don't know what jersey club academics has been to he doesn't look at someone that goes that goes to nightclubs personally for me but you know who knows shout out to all my jersey club producers which which wish one of y'all were on this album so many elements here that reminded me of what y'all have built over the last 15 plus years. Jersey Club is the backbone of Bronx Drill and this is Drake's album. What? I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Somehow Jersey Club has to do with Bronx Drill. I don't know. And somehow Jersey Club inspired this album that sounds nothing like Jersey Club. It sounds like all the music that they're playing right now in Ibiza. They're playing now in Barcelona. They're playing now in parts of Switzerland. They're playing in Austria. They're playing in parts of Berlin. Like this is the house music that's kind of running the scene at the moment. It's probably overtaken, I would say, even tech house. This kind of atmospheric house sort of scene thing. Um, so to label it Jersey Club is absolutely preposterous. There's nothing on there, Jersey Club. There's nothing on there. It's probably even Jersey Club Tempo, I'd imagine. Jersey Club Tempo is a way higher. It's like 126 or something, 128. This sounds like it's in the region between like 110 to 118, maybe 124. So I don't know what that means, but... This is what I don't like when you're a fanboy. You start to make all these excuses. And I think in general, for me personally, if you're going to be a fanboy of somebody, you should be able to call out when stuff isn't to par that you don't like. You shouldn't be making all these backward excuses. And I, I just don't think it's it's just not nice. It's just not cool. It's lame. That's, a, that's the thing. It's just not cool. It's very lame. Um, and I don't know. I've never, I've never looked at stands and thought, yeah, I want to be a stand because they look cool. Um... I just looked at it as a lame thing. I think you can be a stan or you can be a fan of somebody without having to cop please, without having to bend over backwards, without having to, you know, rack your brain for excuses and just say, hey, I expected to hear a, you know, a quintessential Drake album. I didn't get it. It was all dance music. I don't like dance music. I don't go out. I don't dance. So I hate it. It's all good to say that. But to make these excuses just me just doesn't make any sense and of course he's now posting stats as well showing drake controls to top 15 in u.s music charts whatever it may be but in conclusion part of the reason why also the reception has been so lukewarm to it is because he you know i think at that level if you're if you're a star at that level of drake level that kind of level of fame you mean too much to too many people you know you mean too many different things to too many different people and i think one of the reasons why somebody like a Bad Bunny, I think, does really well is because he seems to only care about kind of presenting his music the way he wants to present it 
obviously there's a core theme in terms of reggaeton there but he just cares about presenting the music the way he wants it to be presented he doesn't try to satisfy anything he just i'm going to present it how i want to present it you like it or you don't i think when you try to play the whole liking guessing game thing this is where you end up but i think ultimately like i said before in my first review i think ultimately this will be a good thing for drake going forward i think he's going to be in a far better place artistically because I've always felt like he didn't take enough chances on his albums. They all basically kind of blended into each other. I would have liked to have heard more of a statement of like, okay, cool, this album I'm going to try and make the perfect pop record. This album I'm going to try and make the pop, the perfect flipping interpretation of like Caribbean music that I love. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it may be. He didn't do that enough for me personally. So I think if he can do that going forward, it's going to be fucking sick. Um, and he just like takes chances because then I'm sure from that run, he'll be able to extract from himself a classic album. I don't think he's gonna be able to extract from himself, in my opinion anyway, a classic just focusing on trying to replicate the success of parts of other albums. I don't think it's gonna work that way, in my opinion anyway. I don't think it has, that's how it works. I think you need to be somewhat conceptual, somewhat avant-garde, somewhat out there in your approach. And that's how you end up kind of getting or finding your way or stumbling across, you know, a classic in your repertoire, but again, what do I know?